Whenever you're down Out in the cold Faithless and dark Your story's untold Come take my hand And walk there Welcome. Give yourself a moment to come into a comfortable position. Any position you please that helps you relax into the divine love that you are. The gift that you are. the beautiful, perfect child of God that you are. Let's take a little journey together into a warm and cozy, loving space inside the heart. Perhaps a snowy cabin in the woods with a fire at the heart. Come inside and curl up with the love of God's gorgeous grace. Do you love to be next to the fire, toasting your toes in the warmth? or tucked away in a nook with a view out the window. Do you love a soft, plush cushion? Or are you in your favorite chair? Are there books? Is 
is their artwork. What is here for you in your cozy surroundings? As you revel in the warmth and safety of your heart's love, invite God to be with you in this sacred space. Allow God's love to wash over you and fill you up. Completely loved. Completely adored. Savor God's loving attention for his love is always upon you supporting you encouraging you when you feel completely saturated in God's love, begin a conversation and ask of God, how do you wish to be loved through me? How can I embody your love in my life right now? In every moment, God is here. Love is here. May you walk your path in this world with God's love guiding every step. We're Adam and Brianne, we're Twin Flames and Harmonious Union, and welcome to the Sunday service. And we'll be providing your card reading for this week. Yeah. yeah. So the deck that we pulled from today is uh, the Love and Light deck by Doreen Virtue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, let's get into it. Yeah, so the very first card uh, that come out is Bathe in Divinity. His coming is as brilliant as the sunrise. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like this is spot on for what, you know, we're moving through, you know, claiming our divinity, um, really seeing the truth of that and kind of rising from that, right? Mm -hmm. And when we come into that truth, yeah. Yeah, it feels like a birthing is happening. Um, it's like a, yeah, a birthing or a, a deeper awakening into um yeah the truth like we're all divine beings and uh like releasing the the beliefs and the perceptions that we've had about ourselves that told us that we were not that and um yeah you can just see the little baby yeah it's the there shine on the screen there you go yeah yeah it's just a very powerful card and um you see the little lamb in the back mm -hmm. this is like a lot of innocence and and that is that is like our truth as we are 
innocent children of God. And this is what Jeff and Shalia are um, continuously like driving home and uh, inviting us to wake up to the truth of, you know, by choosing and claiming your divinity, you're choosing and claiming your innocence and um, yeah, your, your value, your wealth, um, everything that is all encompassing in that. Mm -hmm. yeah and then you you don't allow any of that stuff that is not serving you yeah or the world in a sense right yeah that which is not divine yeah mm -hmm. um be the change you wish to see in the world is kind of what comes up for me as well right when mm -hmm. you claim that right and you have to keep affirming that choice you made to uh you know see your divinity and mm -hmm. that means don't allow any of the bad stuff you know yeah yeah good we're working on it right yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right the next card we have is acknowledge god's truth and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free yeah it's, it's, it's kind of like up the first card right like when we see that right like um mm -hmm. yeah what does the bible verse say again which oh, one <laughs> you're holding it oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free and that's like when you when you feel the truth of your divinity you're mm -hmm. free right mm -hmm. you're free in that yeah yeah it's one thing to um to tell yourself mm -hmm. um and to to yeah it's just one thing to tell yourself but it's another thing to know mm -hmm. and to feel it that's uh that takes you to a whole new level and then you can act on and move from that place of oh wow i really am divine mm -hmm. and uh like adam was saying you'll not settle for anything less than perfection for yourself yeah so i love how you know this one's like birthing mm -hmm. and then this one is like emerging you know she has her wings she's standing in her divinity very beautiful yeah mm -hmm. last card last card we have is pure and unconditional love speak to the earth and it will instruct you let the fish in the sea speak to you ah yeah. yeah there's another lamb mm -hmm. a lot of innocence yeah i feel like this uh you know is the earth will tell you how powerful god is uh he created the earth and us right uh, and he's not gonna create anything that is not you know pure mm -hmm. and just love basically yeah. divine yeah, look to the earth. It will tell you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just spending time in, you know, in nature and uh yeah, like looking at the flowers and the trees, like just being in awe of God. And the truth is um the truth is there, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean allow yourself to fully like enjoy that, right? Like take mm -hmm. a moment really, you know. Yeah take that deeper right and just like wow a tree it, it's it's pretty much an amazing thing right yes it is are we the only one who loves trees i don't know no it's pretty good We're, right yeah yeah god created that and he created us mm -hmm. yeah yeah claim your divinity good. good all right so thank you very much uh we invite you to sit back relax and enjoy the rest of today's sunday service Namaste. Hi, my name is Danny. My name is Christina. And we have the pleasure of introducing Jason and Chrissy's sermon today, Your Ministers of Union. And they are going to be sharing about discovering Jesus's teaching of unionism. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was a very deep and meaningful sermon and we um, we received a lot out of it and yeah we'd love to share our, our piece, piece. Mm -hmm. yeah do you want to start sure sure i'll start um one of the very first things that came up while watching this sermon um and while listening to this sermon was that unionism really is the center teaching the the center religion of all all religion it can mm -hmm. it conflicts with no religion and um we find that to be true mm -hmm. that there's absolutely no conflict at all um because unionism is the core piece it's mm -hmm. it's the core teaching it's the core 
um, religion. Yeah, and it's essentially what Jesus came to teach mm -hmm. um, was just love God, that he was a man of God, and showing everyone that he was there to bring them their salvation. Yeah. And that unionism is is the same thing. It, it is your salvation, and it is what everyone desires in religion is is liberation from suffering right. and to be with God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, they, they talk about a lot of what, what they watched and everything um, in, in their the sermon. The Gospel of John. The Gospel of John and um, how Jesus performed miracles and um, how he was received for performing these miracles. And... It really, um, it really resonates because it's the same kind of experience that Jeff and Shelley are experiencing as well um, in some ways with their... Yeah, or any unionist, unionist at this time. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. And what has really come up as well while watching this sermon is that it's to be a unionist is to accept the miracle and and to embody the miracle mm -hmm. like accept the the miracle that has been that has been given mm -hmm. and um to face down all of yourself that um stands in conflict mm -hmm. with love which is the core teaching mm -hmm. and it stands in conflict with god and with peace and um that there's nowhere else to go mm -hmm. because this is the core center uh, way to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, way yeah. of being. Way of being. Yeah, and like what I really feel was communicated strongly as well um, through Jesus and also what we see in our gurus, Jeff and Shalia, is just choosing to show up for God no matter what choosing to show up no matter, you know, how um, you are received or what arises, just choosing to never give up, give up because you do have the tools. We are equipped. Mm -hmm. And yeah, when we walk with God, faith moves miracles. And um, yeah, it's just like very empowering and very powerful. And um, Christy reads a lot of beautiful quotes uh, from the Gospel of John. And you can feel that the way that Jesus communicates is actually very similar to the communication of unionism. Mm -hmm. um, like you can feel that it's the same essence, it's the same energy, and that's just love and God, that it comes from God. Yeah. And yeah, that's what I wanted to share. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, yeah, again, to like touch upon this, like, it's really safe to move through the process of embodying the teaching of unionism mm -hmm. because as you move through the challenges, um, God is with you every step of the way mm -hmm. and that like it's worth the dedication. It's worth the um, commitment to yourself mm -hmm. and to God. Yeah. Um, it's, the most rewarding work mm -hmm. that you could do is to be a uni is to be a unionist, mm -hmm. um, and despite like, yeah, despite any challenge or block or thing that comes up on on the journey, it's all um, healable. It's all healable because the teaching of unionism is complete, mm -hmm. and it's a whole complete solution to human suffering yeah. and yeah that's what just really drove home with me watching this sermon was mm -hmm. um that of commitment and never giving up never giving up on god never giving mm -hmm. up on yourself and um that's the path yes yeah is there anything else that you would like to say no i think no. it's complete yeah Okay, sounds good. Good. So. Yeah, so feel free to sit back and relax and enjoy Jason and Chrissy's sermon.
Thanks. Welcome. We are Jason and Chrissy. Hello. Your ministers of union for today's service. Mm -hmm. Let us begin with our three opening ohms, followed by our opening prayer. Yeah, so everyone, if you would like to take a deep breath in and join us out loud or in your heart. I am the only child of God, forever part of him. I am created by him in perfection, and there I always remain. My mind is my sanctuary, where I keep his holy creation sacred. I will only allow in his voice, will only accept his word. Today, I will hear the word of God. I surrender myself to his teachings through his divine channel. I will honor what he has spoken and accept it as his will. I will be obedient to his word, for this is my salvation. In Christ's name, om, amen. amen. So, what are we talking about today? So today, uh, we would really like to uh, discuss our insights as... Um, about the Gospel of John. It is uh, approaching Christmas, and we wanted to take some time to really talk to you about what we learned as we watched the Gospel of John. Uh, we watched a word-for-word uh, -word depiction of it on uh, Amazon Prime, uh, and it was, a it was beautiful, and we really learned a lot in regards to, um, you know, our experiences as a unionist, and we wanted to share that with you today and how uh, it really provided Jesus Christ's work, provided a pathway, provided a foundation, so to speak, for uh, unionism. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of what uh, occurred in the Gospel of John, like I really could see that in the story and uh, the, the beginning of, of our religion as unionists. Sure. Mm -hmm. And like... Um... Yeah, like, do you know, the story of Jesus, um, which, you know, many, many people are familiar with uh, to any degree, uh, but like he, you know, in that particular time, uh, you know, time frame, like he was, you know, out there performing miracles and uh, doing God's work um, and still like people, you know, weren't buying it, like they'd see the miracle and uh, witness it. And, him. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. And like, um, all he kept pointing to was like, you know, here's, here's your, here's your salvation. Here's your salvation. Like, uh, here's your freedom. Uh, and people, you know, do have the free will to choose that or not choose that. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, like I was, um, the, the Gospel of John really spoke to several different miracles uh, that Jesus Christ performed. The first one that they depicted was uh, turning water to wine at a ceremony or a wedding celebration uh, that Jesus Christ did. And then, um, and everyone saw that and testified to that, but it, he was still rejected as a, a prophet. He was still being rejected uh, by the people as, uh, as a man of God. And, um, like the second was that I remember, and I apologize if they're not in order, I'm, I'm not an expert here on the Bible. I was raised Catholic, but, uh, I'm not necessarily like, you know, an expert and just, I'm doing my best. And so like, uh, the second one I remember is that he had, uh, had performed a miracle on a blind man, somebody who had been blind, uh, from, I believe death, uh, and from birth. 
oops, yeah, uh, from birth. And he uh, healed him and he could see, and he went around testifying to this miracle and that it was the prophet, it was Jesus Christ who performed it. And um, then I remember another one where there was a crippled man again, uh, like from birth uh, had been crippled and uh, Jesus told him, get up, pick up your mat and walk away. And the man did. And he again, testified to these miracles. And he was still not received. He was still questioned on his authority, questioned on his authority to do those acts, his authority uh, to uh, communicate the way that he was communicated in delivering the message of God the way he was. And uh, like, I found that like very insightful to what, uh, you know, Jeff and Shalia have experienced and what we have observed in how they have been treated by people that they have performed, you know, miracles on. Mm -hmm. And it really touched my heart to, um, to see that story unfold and uh, the, see the scriptures being fulfilled uh, in Jesus Christ's life. Yeah. Like, um, you know, and I guess in both, both cases, both scenarios, like um, no one was trying to control, like, you know, Jesus wasn't trying to control or force anyone, no. right? Uh, the, it was totally up to them. And um, the way that they reacted and, and treated him was uh, pretty cruel uh, mm -hmm. in relation to what he was offering. Like he was offering like, uh, you know, happiness and freedom and like uh, love and, 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 God. and like God. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, he was like, more than i guess rejected or mm -hmm. uh, and 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 cast aside and, and uh, abused for doing so uh and you know uh very similar to like how jeff and Shalia are treated uh when they offer that to um uh, you know people in the world or, or uh, outside of the community um it's it's very similar yeah and so like uh last week Abir really uh, provided a beautiful sermon on uh, the guru and the guru relationship. And we wanted to go a bit deeper into that in regards to the lessons we learned from Jesus Christ and his stories and uh, the Bible themselves and, and the Bible itself, and really discuss how to do that and like what uh, we're called to do as unionists and what that looks like. And so what we would talk, what I like to talk about now is like uh, our, our commandments, the unionist commandments. Uh, we have two of them uh, just to keep everyone uh, a bit refreshed on what they are. The first one is our first commandment for unionism, for unionists is to uh, love God first. That's commandment one, love God first. This is put God first above anything and everything else. Uh, God is first in your life. And he, God needs to be prim the primary focus of your life. That's what it means to put God first. These are quips from uh, one of the very first sermons uh, provided to us by Jeff and Shalia. And uh, the second is to love thyself. That is our second commandment. So first commandment is put God first. Second commandment is to love thyself. Those are the two commandments of unionism. And uh, pretty simple, pretty like fundamental uh, but that's our commandments. That's what we choose to do. That's what we are. Uh, that's what Jeff, like, that's what unionists are commanded to do, right? Just like the 10 commandments, our commandments are, uh, put God first and love thyself. Loving yourself, uh, what, what is from the, the sermon, I'm just going to read it. It says, when you're truly loving yourself, it means you're honoring yourself. You're respecting yourself. And in so doing, you're naturally loving and honoring God and respecting God. And this really, you know, aligns into like the eight fundamentals of harmonious twin flame union, uh, respect being one of them. And, uh, you know, that's what we are commanded to do. Very simple. And this is, this is what Jesus Christ commanded of his disciples. Uh, he, he commanded to his disciples to uh, love one another as he has loved them. And that is always what uh, Jeff and Shalia uh, say to us, love, love love us, love yourself, love God, love yourself, love us, love others the way that we have loved you. Uh, it's the same message in, in, in truth, in the fundamental code of it. The code of ethics is the same and it's love, it's God, it's union. And uh, that's what we do as unionists. And as you um, really look here, you will find that uh, there is zero conflict with these two commandments from unionism with any other major religion in the world. Uh, this is the fundamental truth. This is what 
uh, we believe everyone comes to into spirituality for. Uh, and it's really not to, it's not to transcend religion, it's to realize this is the religion of unionism is, is what they're seeking. Uh, it's, it's coming into uh, that knowing and relaxing into it. Right. And like, um, it's, it's pretty straightforward and uncomplicated, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, that's the beautiful part about uh, how easy, how easy it is and how easy life can be, right? Like, uh, just God, your source, right? And so like, yeah. when you need uh, love or attention or whatever, like, you go to God for it, right? You go within within yourself for it um, mm -hmm. because you can't really, no one can give that to you. No one can uh, satisfy that, that hunger that you have um, within yourself for uh, whatever it is other than God, right? And like, uh, you know, looking outside of yourself, trying to get it from somewhere else mm -hmm. other than that, uh, is le just leads to uh, you know suffering and, and pain and like it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah, it's about uh, taking command of your life. Through these two commandments, you will take command of your life. It's you taking control of what um, you can take control of, which is your life, uh, and taking control of yourself and choosing to love yourself and uh, choosing to love God. Uh, you must live in accordance with. Uh, these teachings, uh, I guess the, you must live in accordance with these teachings to be a unionist. <laughs> That's just the truth. I don't know where my thought went there. Uh, there's so much I would like to say on this, but like uh, ultimately, oh, this is where I'm going with this is like the cultural shift, right? Like uh, when you live in accordance with these teachings, when you live in accordance with these commandments, when you live in a, when you live a life of a unionist, when you choose to be a unionist, I am a unionist. I will always be a unionist. I am extremely proud of being a unionist, and um, it's it's um, there's no shame in that choice. There's no shame in accepting that you are a unionist and you're choosing to uh, live your life in alignment with these commandments. And as you do that, as you choose that, you will experience contrast in your life from those who are not choosing that. If you are around or surrounded by people who are, who are not uh, putting God first, who are not putting themselves first, uh, who are not loving God first, who are not loving them, loving themselves, uh, you will find contrast there. It's a cultural shift. Shift. It's a code of ethics. That's what ultimately a religion is. It's a code of ethics. And as you live in alignment with those ethics and you embody it and it becomes your moral compass. Uh, um, and that's what it means to be a unionist is to embody it and allow it to uh, align your life and, and choosing that for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, um, I don't know, we've just by following these, you know, very simple, this simple code of ethics, like, how has your life changed? Oh, my life has completely transformed. I can tell you that when we were reflecting on this and I had an opportunity to um, reflect on my life and reflect on um, like where I am now versus what I was like raised to be or, or who I was raised to be, uh, um, my life has completely changed. There's a quote that's coming up for me. Let me find it. Um, that I think like hits this one, hits the nail on the head here. I just need to see if it's in my notes. Um, it's essentially like um, birth gives birth to birth gives birth. Flesh gives birth. Oh yeah, that's it. Flesh gives birth to flesh. Spirit gives birth to spirit. And so what that meant for me and what I really received from that is that, uh, you can live many lives and still be still be like um dead in spirit like you can live many lives and still be numbed out you can live many lives in, in separation consciousness and, and not with god and uh it's only when you are rebirthed through spirit that uh you are spirit right and that comes from um like 
that comes that comes from a prophet that comes from a messenger of God that comes from somebody who can who can bring that to you and this is really getting into the guru relationship and understanding that like there's a re, re, rebirth that occurs spiritually in your life uh, when you embody this work and that is what Jason and I have both experienced we've experienced a rebirth in our life and like we are choosing to live one life in alignment with these teachings we choose to live uh and walk the pathway of harmonious twin flame union because that's what unionism is. Uh, union is the, like the path of, of unionism is harmonious twin flame union. And so uh, we have been re reborn here and there is a clear line in the sand for us in regards to that truth and that moral compass and that culture and, and who we choose to be and, and, and what we choose to do with our life and living our purpose. And we find it very fulfilling. We find love in every space. Like, I have personally uh, received the miracle of our guru. Like I have personally received deep peace in a place within my mind that was hurting from trauma with math that was gifted to me by our guru. I have seen, I received deep peace every time I watch a TFAS class or life purpose class. Uh, there are miracles in every moment of their word. And uh, I am deeply grateful for having the opportunity to receive it and having the opportunity to share it with you. Yeah, I'm like, um, you know, I've, I've experienced like, um, just loops in my life that were like, you know, how, how is this is never ending, right? Is this mm. loop in my life is, it's just like never ending. It just keeps happening and it, and it was, it's hard. And it's like, not something that you want to continuously experience on like a groundhog day level. Um, and that and just like accept as like that's going to be your life um and so when when i found uh this work uh it freed me from that right and like that's it that in itself is a miracle right and it's available to anyone right god is available to anyone and uh this work is available to anyone um to to free to free yourself from uh, anything in your life that you're experiencing that uh, you don't like or you find a problem or uh, is is just like um, making you angry or sad or you know any anything right like um, that in itself is a miracle to be able to uh, work through your challenges and uh, find peace in your life and uh, you know experience like a, a whole community of like um where you're loved without condition versus like uh being in the world and and you know uh only being loved um because it's conditional because you get something or you give mm -hmm. something uh in return for that love right and like um you know that's that's a huge difference, that's a huge uh, difference in your life to uh, be a part of, you know, being in a, in a situation where you're loved unconditionally and not, you know, just because uh, you, you give uh, a certain thing. Yeah, I think like um, what's coming to my mind as you talk about that and being like um, choosing to do like, it's like like attracts like, right? Or um, choosing to honor the community that gives to you uh and and i jesus christ actually wrote something and it is from the gospel of john as well um that i would like to read it's just a little passage this is this is jesus christ speaking uh from the gospel of john i am the true vine and my father is the gardener he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. That's the gospel of John. 
And so what does that mean to you as a unionist? As you read that passage? How have you experienced that in your life? Um, yeah, being connected to God and my source, like I bear quite a bit of fruit, right? And yes. my life, my life <laughs> blossoms with fruit versus like um, me trying to do it on all on my mm. own and my wheels just spin. Yeah, what you don't some, really get anywhere. What are some fruits in your life from from uh, applying that, applying unionism in your life? Uh, well, my our marriage. Our marriage, right? yeah. Our, uh, Living our life with our twin flame. Our dog. Mm -hmm. Our soul dog, Emmy, who's <laughs> making herself known that she's in the room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, no, our relationships and yeah. within the community mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, our, our life living on per living on purpose every sure, day. Our, our such life. a gift, right? Yeah, yeah that's such and, fruits. And, uh, our, yeah. our life uh, and our relationships, our yeah. right? Yeah, those are all examples of fruits of of the work. And and as we continue to prune, we continue to experience wealth and richness in all areas of our life. Um, you know, from materialistic things to spiritual things, to wealth, to health, like a uh, map is a fruit, a uh, divine dish is a fruit. We love all of our purpose work. We just enjoy it so much. Mm -hmm. It's such a gift to live on purpose. It truly, truly is. Right. And like mm -hmm. uh, all of those things in your life, like brings a whole lot of joy versus like yeah. having to, um, you know, constantly and repeatedly deal with like be on the grind. Yeah. The grind. The, uh, yeah. You know, unfavorable situations, I guess. And yeah. this is what it means to um be a unionist. It's dedicating your life, dedicating we dedicate our life to um the mission of uniting every every uh like son of God, every to uh to God, right? <laughs> Let me rephrase that. So, like, I have it written down here: dedicate and commit yourself to the mission of uniting every last son of man with God, and committing to that mission until every son of God returns home to perfect union with God. It's a total commitment. Uh, it's a total surrender uh, until into this work, into this mission, until the last son of God has returned home, and that's what we choose to do as unionists. And this is the this is the teachings of uh, all of the great masters all of the great prophets of, of every religion is to, uh, you know, to commit to uh, the path to bring every, every child home, every child of God home, right? And we do this through unionism. Yeah. It's the creed by which we live. Yeah, so. Do you have anything else, babe, or do you feel you feel good here? Well, yeah, we do it right, like because we. Uh, um, that's what God desires, and we mm -hmm. we love our brothers and sisters, right? Yeah, and God so, first. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we do as God asks. We live. We live a very. We live a surrendered life, and we're continually continuously invited into deeper and deeper surrender. And I can tell you from the challenges that we have in our life, from whatever arises, we are completely equipped to move through them through uh, the teachings provided us to, provided us here um, through Jeff and Shalia in Twin Flames Universe. Those teachings, uh, continuing to have a relationship with the teachings, continuing to uh, embody the work that is presented to us through the teachings, as we do that and we continue to live in the light, live that way, uh, we are continuously blessed with more and more. Uh, uh, love and light in our life, more and more God in our life. And it's a process and have compassion for yourself as you're moving through it. And, uh, you know, like be truthful with where you are and, and always know that when you stand before God, you are loved and uh, you can trust that as you choose love, you are loved because you are divine. Every one of us is divine. And you just simply claim that divinity within you in every moment and uh, honor honor what it means to embody your divinity and choose to continuously move into a uh, perfect union with your creator. You feel good? Sure. Good, all right. We wanna thank you so much for joining us today. We will close uh, today with our closing prayer and alms. Please join us. 
Father, I accept your word in my heart. I will honor your will in my life and will follow you without hesitation anywhere you ask. I know you guide me into your heart where I belong. I accept that you are everywhere and your teaching is in all things. God, I know you provide me clarity in this teaching of union that I may forever be in union with you. I accept that you are in me as you are in my brother. I will not deny my brother your word and will share your teaching with him in any way you ask and only as you ask. For when I share my salvation with him, I fully claim my salvation and return to you with him. In Christ's name, Om. Amen. Amen. Speaking this prayer in your heart means you have accepted that you are on the path of awakening to your true divine nature. This is what it means to be a unionist. Follow the teachings of union with God wherever you find them and purify your consciousness into perfect union with your creator. At this time, please take a nice deep breath in and chant with us out loud or in your hearts. Thank you for joining us. See you next time. Namaste. Welcome back. Thank you so much for watching today's Sunday sermon with Jason and Chrissy. And that was a beautiful sermon. Yeah, it really was. Yeah. Yeah, I loved its simplicity and depth. Jason and Chrissy did a really great job of conveying the connection between Jesus' teaching of, union, of unionism and the unionism teaching that we have today mm -hmm. and how simple it is. It's just the two commandments of putting God at the center and loving thyself mm -hmm. and yeah, just allowing it to be simple, just knowing that loving is easy, that loving yourself is easy and um, yeah to love others as you have been loved and in that way we change the world and we bring every man of god home yep yeah 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 it was a very beautiful and touching sermon very deep um i agree with everything mm -hmm. that you just said and um i loved how they described unionism i love how they shared that their experience of how unionism has transformed their lives mm -hmm. and um, shared a little bit about, about their experiences and their story. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, just the wisdom that has, that has come from Jesus mm -hmm. and how he really helped to build the foundation of what unionism is today. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, very important sermon and yeah. yeah, it was very, very good. So yeah. Thank you, Jason and Chrissy. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you very much. Yeah. And so go ahead and um subscribe to this YouTube channel if you are watching this on YouTube and you really liked it and you would like more sermons. You can like and subscribe, hit the bell note notification, come on every week on Sunday. <laughs> and um also, you are invited to unionism.org as well, where you can um, look up past sermons on there as well, um, prayers and music. You are also invited to donate or tithe if that calls to you as well to um, support the movement. Mm -hmm. And we also have after church tea time on our Facebook page, the unionism. Oh. 
Yeah, no, the Unionism, oh, Unionism discussion, spiritual discussion group. Yes, yes, on Facebook. We've got after church tea time for you to join if you would like. So many invitations. Yes. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, that concludes oh. today's sermon. Great. And thank you very much for coming. Thank you for watching. And we will see you next time. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank Bye, you. everyone. Bye-bye.